I am making crab cakes. <laughs> How am I doing that? Well, you're going to see. I'm going to use some very savory ingredients and we're going to have for dinner tonight a wonderful fermented black bean, uh, green bean and shiitake mushroom stir fry, no oil used. I stir fry, dry fry. And we're going to have these wonderful crab cakes and then we're going to have an Asian slaw. And um, recipes for all of that can be found on my website, nansimmonson.com. So let's begin. Ingredient number one, canned whole artichoke hearts. These have been drained and rinsed. I'm gonna throw them in, well, pretty well rinsed. And then I'm adding, we've got a good protein source, a can of organic garbanzo beans. I use organic as often as I can because it's just too prevalent, um, the spraying that goes on uh, with non-organic foods. And they spray to keep down weeds, they spray to, keep, spray to keep down bugs, and I don't want that stuff in me. So I always go to the organic. And this is Hearts of Palm. When I opened this can, there were four columns. This is a partial column. My hands are washed, I just washed them. Uh, this is, it would have been about that long. Hearts of palm are literally that, the heart of a certain palm. And I pulled them out, I drained it, I rinsed them, I cut them into pieces, but I wanted to show you the can. And those are going in as well. So what do I have in here? I have Whole Foods plant-based. They are hearts of palm, garbanzo beans, and, um, uh, artichoke hearts. Now, I'm going to add the flavor. First of all, I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of freshly squeezed lemon juice. And I'm going to be tasting because I may add more. And I'm not going to give you amounts. The amounts are on the recipe because when I taste, I may do a lot of adjusting and that will be um, reflected on the recipe. I'm using an old fashioned seasoning for seafood, and that is Old Bay seasoning, which is primarily celery salt. It's celery salt and some other spices, red pepper, black pepper, and paprika. And I'm also putting in a little bit of extra paprika. I'm putting in some dill weed, and I'm putting in something to add sort of a fishiness, a sea vegetable, and it could have been seaweed, a few sheets of, in this case, I could have used maybe three or four sheets of seaweed, and you can find this at just about any store, roasted seaweed snack, and in this case, again, organic. Or I could use dulse, granules, organic dulse granules. I could have used kombu, which is also seaweed. And I used the dulse. So I put in, oh, what did I put? Well, I believe it was one or two, and I'll let you know. Um, and this is going to give it that bit of um, kind of, I wanna say, well, that sea aroma. I'm putting in, chopped garlic, I'm adding chopped cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, you can use a bit of parsley. If you don't have fresh parsley, you can use dry parsley. I have a half of a um, chopped red onion. And I saved some of the aquafaba. That's what it's called, that fluid, the juice, the broth that you get from the can of garbanzo beans when you open it, because if this is a little dry, I'll add that to add a little moisture. I'm also going to put in, I'm gonna begin by putting in a half a cup, this is a whole cup, but I'm gonna put in a half a cup of um, original real panko. And ooh, I didn't get organic. I got gluten-free, non-GMO, that's helpful, um, but not organic. Well, 
what I really needed was gluten-free in my case, and that's hard to find, and dairy-free, so it's vegan. And let's see, I'm gonna add a little bit, because I like spice, just a little bit of red chili flakes. Okay, and I don't want this to be mashed to a paste. Now, I don't know if you can tell what I'm using here. I'm so excited about this. Before I put this on, what you were looking at was my Vitamix. I got a new Vitamix that would accommodate a new offering of the Vitamix company, and that is a food processor that will fit on the base of a Vitamix. So in my case, I had to get the one that um, they that would adapt that was adaptable for the um, food processor, but I did it, and I, I just love this. And you could go to Vitamix.com and see what I'm talking about. I think it was a bit of an investment, maybe five six hundred dollars. But Christmas is coming up, and boy, is it nice not to have to pull out anything else. And this just goes up in a high cupboard. Okay, so I want to break it up. I don't want to open this. Sorry about that. All right, I'm gonna turn it and just, oops, a little bit of parsley there and mix it just a bit. Oh, oh my gosh, does this smell good. Oddly enough, it actually smells a bit crabby. Crabby as in crab. I loved crab cakes. Actually, I loved seafood, but the oceans are becoming depleted, I think. And they are so polluted with plastics and mercury and garbage. Um, and fish have been way overfished that I am very comfortable bypassing that. All right, that may be it. I don't want it to be too chunky or it won't hold together, but I also don't want it to be too finely mixed. How are we doing? I'll show it to you when I'm convinced that this is what I want, and I, I think I am. I'm afraid if I do it too much, see, I see bits of garbanzo bean that, and bits of the artichoke that are not, uh, okay, I'm gonna do it one more time, and that's it. And if you have, <laughs> For sure, that's it. Put this aside. I'm going to taste. Oh, this is nice. Okay. You know what? It's a little more pasty than it should have been. I could have stopped earlier, but let me show you. Look. See? But do you see there's still chunks? See that? And yes, there's still plenty of texture here. Let me taste and see what I think. Mm. Oh my gosh, that's actually perfect. Mm. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, move this out of the way. ready to make the crab cake. Actually, I don't need any of this anymore. Although, I'm gonna allow for some panko crumbs to be on the outside of the crab cakes. I need this lemon again. And a 
keep this and this. I'm gonna empty. Food processor bowl. All right. And this makes a lot. Is this expensive? Mm, I don't think so. The, I'm trying to think of the price of everything. The garbanzo beans were 99 cents, even organic. I got them from Trader Joe's. The, um, actually I got it all from Trader Joe's. Every one of those cans were right there on the shelf next to each other, actually pretty close to each other. I'll take this out of the sink. These are the green beans that I've washed that will go, I'm gonna put this right here, that will be cooked with fermented black beans. I'm experimenting with something. The recipe calls for using about a third of a cup of the, um, mixture to make a crab cake. I want a nice big crab cake. I don't want a little teeny one. And I like the size of this. This is a funnel. A lot of us have funnels. I'm gonna try and see what I can do to make a crab cake using the little slice of parchment paper that I cut off when I put the parchment paper on this tray. And I'm gonna see what about a third of a cup, this is not a full half of a cup, will look like in here. The reason I'm using the parchment paper also, I think I'm gonna go for a half a cup. I'm experimenting as I'm talking to you. All right. See, I can pull this out if it doesn't come out and then I can flatten it, but I have, oh, I like this. All right, now, this is all experiment while I'm talking to you. I do this a lot. And, excuse me a minute. I'm gonna put this on some crumbs. All right. All right. So I am, I'm using, forget a third of a cup, I'm using a half a cup, I'm using a silly little tool to allow me to get a rounded shape that I can then just flatten out. These are gonna be nice sized crab cakes. One per person will be just fine. All right, and another, and then we'll see how many we get. The recipe called for a third of a cup per, and well, one of the recipes. I did what I do a lot. Looked at three vegan crab cake recipes, and then came up based on things that I like and flavors that I like to marry with my own version. And one of the recipes that called for a third of a cup, one of them just said, make, oh, I don't know what it said, make six or eight and didn't talk about the amount you used. That would have been a kind of a hunt and peck kind of a thing. All right. Sorry. Okay, so this is going pretty fast. Let me slide this over in case I need more room. Now what's gonna happen here, I'm gonna let them rest just a bit because I'm gonna make a tartar sauce and I don't wanna cook this until my husband and I are just about to eat because they're cooked about um, well, I want to say three to six minutes per side, depends on how thin it is, um, how dense, of course, and 
three to six minutes per side is not a lot. I'm using a stand pan. I'll mention that later. If I'm cutting, I may or may not cook them in front of you. I may simply show you what they look like, but the scan pan is a non-stick surface. And here we go. What these additional crumbs are going to do is that they're going to give me, I think, a crunchier crab cake. No oil being used. All right. I'm actually quite surprised at how moist these are. Okay. And let's do two more. But I'm gonna sprinkle a little on the tops of all of them. Okay. There. And that'll help dry out the surfaces. So with a half a cup in each, it looks like we're getting eight crab cakes. That's pretty good. In other words, I could feed, unless somebody had a really big appetite, I could feed eight people a crab cake, top it with a tartar sauce that I'm gonna show you in just a minute, serve it with a salad of some kind. Tonight will be the Asian slaw, but it could have been a big, beautiful green salad. And the green beans. And what a nice meal. All vegan, as delicious as can be. Nothing had to die for it. Sorry, but that's what happens with animals. And um, there. Okay. One of the recipes said put it in the freezer for 20 minutes to let it sit and chill and marry. I might do that if I'm not going to cook them right away. There, let me show you. Take a look. Doesn't that look nice? I think it's gonna look terrific when they're nice and brown. So I'm putting these in the freezer. And I'm not saying that in the recipe, I'll let you know how that went and recommend it if I think it really did need it. All right, another handy tool that I love, a mini cuisinart. I bought this for a song somewhere and don't even remember where. And I love it because it uses so little space when I wanna do something like this. I'm making a tartar sauce, and there are a number of ways I could have made tartar sauce. With mayonnaise, with vegan mayonnaise, which is called vegan, well, one of them is veganaise. Um, problem is that's loaded with oil, and I avoid using extra oil. I eat foods with oil, for example, nuts and seeds and olives and avocado, but I don't add oil to my foods. I don't see any reason to, calorie-wise, I don't see any reason to add um, additional omega-3 fatty acids, I mean six fatty acids, so I just don't. And a large group of whole food plant-based advocates feel the same way. So what am I going to add? Okay, I'm gonna add some dill, some ground pepper, and you'll get your, your um, amounts on this, and a little bit of sea salt. That's all been mixed in. Now I'm throwing this in because I love it. 
and I'll let you know what I think of the flavor. Well, you'll probably see because I'm going to taste it. And that is rinsed, and they'll be chopped in here. Um, capers. Capers have a, not kind of fishy, but there's, there's something special about their flavor. I'm going to add some mustard, Dijon mustard. And a couple of tablespoons. Should I have one or two to start with? Mm, I'm going to do two. The lemon juice. And then I'll see if I want to add more. This is fresh squeezed. I always have them on hand. I actually buy a massive amount of lemons and I squeeze them with my electric juicer and freeze two cups at a time. So when I say freshly squeezed, that's as freshly squeezed as they get except the day I do it. Then I'm going to add, I love slightly sweetened tartar sauce. And so I'm gonna start by adding a teaspoon of, this is organic pickle relish, sweet pickle relish. Now some of you won't want this because there's no way to get around the fact that there's sugar in here. Okay, sorry. So what's going to, oh my gosh, I love the look of this. What's gonna happen is we're going to have this toasted, crunchy top, even though I'm not using oil, I'm using a um, non-stick skillet, and um, the, the crab cake, and then we'll put on top of it um, a nice serving of the um, tartar sauce. Let's see what I think. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, I can taste the capers. No more than a teaspoon. That would be too much. But that's really, really good. Mm. Do I want a little more mustard? I'll put a touch more mustard. And that's it. And I don't want it any sweeter. That tastes perfect. Otherwise, it would be sweet and odd for this. And, um, oh, and I also added... Um, a half a teaspoon of onion powder and a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. All right. Now, when this, I'm gonna be right back. What I had used, and I don't know if I showed you was silken tofu. Rather than using mayonnaise, I used a bean. This is fermented tofu, and silken tofu is a little different than, even though it's still firm, uh, is a little different than the conventional tofu. It's not in the refrigerator section. It's where the Asian foods are, but on a shelf, and it has more water than conventional tofu. And But I always get the organic, and it is, um, it has protein. It has protein, it has calcium, it has fiber, not a lot, but some. Um, and it's a whole food. Well, slightly processed, not completely whole food, but a very good source of um, a creaminess. I use it for tofu mayonnaise. Now I'm using it for tofu, um, uh, tartar sauce and it will in the refrigerator thicken up a little bit and what you're going to find if you transition to whole food plant-based you're going to have sauces uh, sorry you're going to have sauces that you're going to fall in love with and it makes everything taste better the tofu sour cream, I call it that, actually adds protein to a dish. It adds a cool, kind of a slightly lemony, um, uh, well, what sour cream does, but without any animal product and without the additional fat. 
tofu is a legume that has a decent amount of fat. It's probably about 30% fat, but it's encased in its whole food uh, body. Uh, the beans, whether it's beans or tofu, you're still getting the same amount of fat in it, but it's a whole food fat, and that doesn't bother me at all. Okay. This will go in my refrigerator, and that is my um, tartar sauce. I'll be back to you in just a few minutes when I'm cooking, I will cook it for you, when I'm cooking the um, crab cakes, and you can see what you think. I'll be back. Hello. All right, I'm back, apron and all, ready to cook. I heated my scan pan. I like this non-stick pan. I think it's one of the best on the market. It's one of the safest. It has a titanium ceramic coating, not a Teflon coating, and it doesn't chip away. I, these are, I put them in the freezer. You saw that they're looking beautiful, and I think they needed the rest. I, they absorb some additional moisture into those panko crumbs, and that's why it was so soft before. I have a spray bottle after that whole thing about oil that I said. I have a spray bottle. I sprayed, and then I wiped it out, and you can see that there's nothing but a film in here. Why did I do that? Because I was worried that the, uh, the crumbs might still stick. Maybe that wasn't the case. So I have it nice and hot. I put a sprinkle of water and it sizzled. And I'm going to put as many as I can get on here to cook. It'll probably be four. And we're going to give them... We'll see. I'm saying three to six minutes per side. And... We'll see what we think. In the meantime, while these are cooking, I'm going to grab what I just made as our side dish, and that is my fermented black bean shiitake mushroom green beans. Now, the problem is I don't remember what I am calling it on my website. It's either green beans with fermented black beans and shiitake mushrooms, but I'm pretty sure it's fermented black beans, shiitake mushrooms, and green beans. Anyway, let me show you. I think it's a fabulous dish. It's what I call a stir fry, and yet there's no oil. I put hot green beans into my wok. Actually, take that back. I heat my wok quite high, put the green beans that have been washed so they have a little bit of moisture in them in there, and then I stood, I, um, I'm going to say blacken them, but not really. I let them get a little bit charred in the pan at one point when I have charred them well enough. And again, they're not really black. They're more like, like that. It's almost like when you get roasted corn, uh, frozen roasted corn to put in a dish where you want a smokier flavor, that kind of a thing. Then I added reconstituted sliced shiitake mushrooms and garlic and um, rinsed, let me put this a little higher. And rinsed um, black beans, fermented black beans. I got them on Amazon and um, kept stirring it. I used some of the broth from the, um, and it's all on the menu, on the recipe. Some of the broth that I got from soaking the sh dried shiitake mushrooms, which I get on Amazon organic. I buy a pound of them at a time, and I think it's about $25 a pound. 
um, but it goes forever. You use only a few ounces reconstituted, and this is probably no more than an ounce and a half to two ounces reconstituted. So it's peanuts, garlic, fermented black beans, shiitake mushrooms, and um, tamari. The tamari is added at the last minute. It kind of caramelizes in the pan, flavors all of this. The green beans are crunchy and really well flavored. So that will go along. with our crab cakes. And let's flip this over and see what it's looking like. Nope, not ready. I flipped that, so I'll flip these. That one's a little more brown. Mm. Nope, not ready. I'm gonna cheat and take a little piece. See what I think. Oh, that's nice. That's going to be lovely with the um, tartar sauce. I'm going to let this sit a little bit longer, get them toasted well on both sides, and um, I'll show you one plated. All right, be back. <laughs> 